Hello everyone, I'm here. This is a, uh, a uh, International Palm Society webinar, and uh, this is Jeremy Evancheski, and he is uh, explaining sort of his journey uh, into the palm world. He's just a, a palm enthusiast who, uh, who grows palms in, in Florida, and, and this, he's explaining sort of how he's landscaped his home. So I just wanted to record a bit of this and uh, show you guys. So he's just explaining sort of the evolution of his yard, and uh, he's in northern Florida. Um, so yeah, he has coconuts, which is pretty impressive and he's he's tried experimenting and he's explained some of that so uh yeah just uh take a listen to this this is pretty interesting a little bit more frost on the south side and that tends to damage things a little bit more but irrespective of that you can see that i started with bananas there uh from 2011 to 2015 and uh you know that was fine because if they get damaged they come right back but then come 2018 i got uh, i got my hands on two uh, Jamaican tall coconut palms and planted them there. And I wanted to put some plants in that would windscreen them. And you can see now in the October 2020 photos that the sea grapes and uh, podocarpus hedges I put there can totally block your view. Uh, if you don't, if you don't look up from, you know, 50 feet away, you won't even see the coconut behind it, even though it has, you can see the picture on the right, uh, it has eclipsed the eve of the roof and you still can't see it because the podocarpus and the, uh, and the sea grapes have gotten so high. Um, just a little bit of hardscaping that I've done. Uh, this area was uh, really kind of a newly added area if you want to call it that i used to have a swimming pool there and um the pool is older than i am it was in disrepair it was very hard to maintain so i had it taken out um and when i had it taken out obviously i wanted a backyard that i could enjoy so i did put a fire pit in and you can just kind of look across and whenever they took this patio out they damaged the area around my screen door to the point where it really wasn't safe to go out that even if you knew that it was broken up. So you can see the hardscaping that I did there to actually make stairs out of retaining wall blocks and, and just stone that it, it drains very well. If the wind blows the rain in there, it just drains down through the stone and it, it's fairly easy to maintain bow around, you know, use a weed trimmer. Um, you can see some of the plants in the background. I do have bamboo. Bambusa old hammy eye is uh, my favorite. The ice cream bananas were actually just moved. I actually just moved those. And then you can see some young plantings with the planters around them. The uh, In the bottom picture, you can see a Vichia ericina uh, with a tall, thin trunk down there past the oak tree. So, uh, And then behind that, there is an Arconto phoenix alexandra there. I've added a few more of the crew. You can see Aranga angleri. Yeah, that's a pretty common oh, one. The uh, close up of the Arconto Phoenix. A Euterpia dualis. This is the orange crown shaft variety. Carpentaria cuminata. You can see I, I got a couple young ones there. They they did fine this winter. Uh, Satacantia bismarckia nobilis. You have Bicario uh, Phoenix and, uh, I'm sorry, Bicario Phoenix alfredii and Bicario Phoenix fenestralis and pseudo phoenix sargentii with the planter around it and you know whenever rob mentioned this and I'm, then i'll be ready to turn it back over for questions or comments or anything um this is kind of a summary of some of my palm talk contributions here the cold hardiness master data basically takes the cold hardiness data for all for all of the plants or all of the palms in the um, freeze forums and condenses it into one spreadsheet. So you can search the spreadsheet. It is filtered. You can search the spreadsheet um, by species or by you know, genus or by uh, or by species. And I'll just bring that over here. You can see it. So like, let's say I want only hardiness observations for adenidia for whatever reason, you can see that I can pull up adenidias. It'll tell me, you know, how much damage they experienced That's and super cool. what the low temperature was. 
if they if the uh, if the observation was during an event, then it'll have the event listed, and there is an events table that'll tell you what event it came from. Uh, and then give like a description. This was mostly given by the person who posted it. And then you can see like here, you know, the Florida temperature data on Google Maps. That one's a pretty interesting one if you're a Floridian because uh, it takes all of the NOAA data and it plots it on a map. Okay. The Florida freeze and weather station data, that's also a Palm Talk, uh, a Palm Talk forum. You can go on there. The, I think the Texans were mostly posting on it whenever I last looked at it. There, I did make kind of like a that zone map of Lakeland so on the challenges of collecting app accurate temperature data is also included on that. And just to close it out, um, here is the Florida map for the Floridians on the call. And you can see, you can click on one of these nodes and it'll tell you, you know, how much data it has what the average low was, what the record low was. And you can go here and click, you know, if you're a Floridian on your low, you know, close to your location anyway. That's cool. And it'll tell you, you know, okay, spanning 50 years, we have 27 of those years. The average low at the executive airport was 32.59 and the record low was 25 during that period. Pretty low. So um, with that, that was just, uh, a real quick run through a decade of learning. So, you know, thank all of you and I'll turn it back to Ron. All right, this is a question <clears throat> section, so. Great, yeah. thank you, Jeremy, that was fantastic. I, uh, this is the question section, so. Yeah, this is a really interesting, uh, for all of those of you, know, of the, of you who are not uh, IPS, International Palm Society members, I really uh, highly recommend you, you join the Palm Society, it's the largest Palm Society in the world and uh, sort of combines a lot of Palm Societies from around the world. So I highly recommend you um, you join the International Palm Society. You can join for free uh, or have a paid membership. Uh, I don't know if you can uh, access the webinars with the free membership, but I highly recommend you know, you can you know donate to the, uh, or have a paid membership because it's you know benefiting Palm Research for all you Palm lovers out there. So. This is really interesting, and uh, yeah, for you, those of you uh, who are our Palm Society members, uh, don't don't miss out on the opportunity to join in one of these webinars. They're really awesome, and this is the first one I've been able to join. And this was, I don't know what this is like the the fifth or something, um, but they've done they've done a few already, and I've watched them. Uh, they they make recordings then and post them on on palms.org, the International Palm Society's website. So very interesting. Uh, definitely should join in the web, web uh, webinars. They are free, um, and. Uh, I th yeah, so yeah, um, I think you can even join them with a free IPS membership. So uh, yeah, yeah, join the International Palm Society. It's a it's a great way to connect, um, you know, with palm lovers uh, from around the world. So thanks for watching, and uh, yeah, I you should join in one of these. They're awesome.